I am with Country View Family Farms, and I am their current field veterinarian. Um, so my very catchy title is Country View Family Farms Experience with Abdomen. So in the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to give you just a brief introduction of who Country View Family Farms is, which I will be calling CVFF from this point forward, and then what our experience with Aptimian was, where we implemented, and then the results that we have to this point so far. So to get started, Country View Family Farm has roughly 270 team members. We have 62,000 sows located on 16 different sow units. These sow units, as this map shows you, are mainly located in Pennsylvania, but we also have three sow units that are located in Indiana. We also have all the supporting nursery and finishing barns, which are spread through Pennsylvania, New York, Virginia, Indiana, and Ohio. So we do have a fairly large demographic that we cover um, from a space size. So also all the hogs are turned to Clemens Food Group in Hatfield, Pennsylvania for harvest, which is just a fun fact for you. So our system organization, from a production standpoint, we do three-phased production. So we have our sow units. All our sows at the units are owned by Country View Family Farms, and also we manage those sow units as well. So this really helps make sure that our medication, vaccination, and production strategies all get implemented exactly how we'd like them to be implemented for the most part. Um, so then, like I mentioned, we also have all the nursery finishing space for those sow units, but they are mainly contract growers. Um, we do have two nurseries that are actually managed by CVFF team members as well, but for the most part, it's contract growers. So we have what we would call really four different regions in our system. So three of those regions belong in Pennsylvania. They're the northern region, the western region, and the southern region. And then we have our one region, which is out in Indiana, which we call the ECB. And this information will become important here in a few minutes. But I'd really, for the most part, our health is we are PERS negative, we are flu negative, we are myco negative, and we are PED naive, except for the uh, region that we are going to focus in on, which is my three sow units out in Indiana. They are all PERS positive. We have one that is battling myco, we have one that is battling flu, and the other one has had PED. So that's definitely where most of our health challenges exist. So there's 12,000 sows out there. Their corresponding nursery space is in Indiana and Ohio, but then they finish out in either Indiana, Ohio, or Pennsylvania. So just to give you a brief history of our CVFF PERS experience, in the last 10 years, we've had 36 PERS breaks. And on the next slide, I'll show you the demographics of where most of them occurred. In the last five years, we've had 14 PERS breaks. So this being said, we have done many different programs for control, elimination, prevention. We've done herd closures. We've done the herd closures with MLV. We've done the leave the herd open and do MLV. We've done the MJ PERS strategy. We've done DPOPs, repops. So we've really done just about all different strategies to help us control this. Um, with honestly with little success. So this map here, this is one of our sow units. This is Skyview, which you will meet later. This is another one of our sow units, and so is this one. This one is Deer Ridge, who you will also meet later. And then those other dots are just some of our nursery and finishing space out in that direction in Indiana. So the demographics of our PERS breaks, in the last 10 years, Oops. In the last 10 years, only 3% of them came from what we'd call the northern tier when in Pennsylvania. 39% of them came from the western region, which is also in Pennsylvania. And then 42% of the 36 came from our eastern Corn Belt, our Indiana flows. In the last five years, you can see that that's greatly changed. 29% came from western Pennsylvania and 71 from those three sow units out in Indiana. To give you an idea of 14, out of 14, that means 10 of our 14 breaks happened on three farms. 
which when you think of it that way, that's pretty impressive over the last five years. So that includes, in that, I included rebreaks or new introductions. So the farms that I ended up enrolling in my field study, the first one was Skyview, which is a 2700 head sow unit. It weans once a week roughly 1,200 pigs into two different nursery sites. So it's prior PERS break history, which is one of the reasons why I had chosen this farm, is eight years prior to me arriving, this farm had never broken with PERS. It had been eight years. Um, maybe it was a bad sign, but I got hired on, and they've broken with PERS twice since then. Um, but we have done all sorts of our, well, so our current prevention strategy with them is doing PERS MLV in the gilts, and then PERS MJ in the gilts, and also PERS MJ in the sow. To stabilize these herds, we do mass MJ vaccinations. We do make them follow a strict McRebel pro protocol. And then we do have testing, which it goes in sequence. You need to get four negatives of 30 in a row, and then two negatives of 60 in a row. And we are playing around with that, but that's been our main um, standard testing. So originally, when Dr. Seat first presented the protocol to me, I was going to do 16 weeks at Skyview. But as you'll find out later, Deer Ridge, right in the middle of me starting my trial, Deer Ridge broke with PERS, and it seemed more applicable to do eight weeks at Skyview and then eight weeks at Deer Ridge. So Deer Ridge is a 5,600 head sow unit, so they wean twice a week. They wean 2,600 in a week. Their prior PERS break history in the last five years, they have broken at least once every year. Um, and they are on the same current prevention strategy as well as stabilization plan that Skyview is. So Skyview's trial, the timing of vaccination post-break was something that Dr. C and I debated a lot about because they were three months post-break when we first implemented the Barricade PERS product and they're already starting to wean negative pigs, or starting to have pools of negative pigs. So the protocol at the sow unit, we did one mil internasal at processing, and then we did do the two mils internasal at weaning. No, the team members did not love doing the two mils at weaning, but they did respect that what we were trying to do with this product, so they did do it. Um, so when we were looking at this trial, our goal was to evaluate our pre-wean mortality, our nursery mortality, our average daily gain, feed conversion, and then time to negative. So today I'm only really going to be able to present to you our nursery mortality as we're still looking at some of those other aspects. I do have what this farm's time to negative was because they are currently um, PERS positive stable. And then um, we're still, like I mentioned, we're still investigating the other things that we'd like to evaluate. So I apologize because I didn't realize how light blue this was. But so our x-axis is the date that these lots from the nursery closed. Our y is the percent. So these yellow dots are when we confirmed that that was a closed lot of PERS-positive pigs. So as you can see, this is, we have some pretty high staggering nursery mortality with some of the PERS that we saw. So this was their very first break, so it followed a similar trend as their second break, and this was about when we were confident that we were clean and negative, and then we broke again. So here you can see the red dots in the back here are where we actually had closed lots that we had vaccinated with the two-dose program with Aptimune. So there was definitely an improvement there to give you another idea. The one nursery lot in this previous PERS break in the same time frame had a 10% mortality. When we looked at it compared to Aptimune, they had a 2% in their nursery lots. The other nursery had a 6% in their previous PERS break, and in the lots that they closed out with Aptimune in the same time frame, data 2.87. So Deer Ridge, their timing of vaccination post-break was actually much, much sooner. 
they broke, um, we were able to get the Aptimune vaccine implemented three weeks post-break. So seven weeks post-break, they were already weaning Aptimune pigs into the nursery. So we did the same exact protocol at Deer Ridge. And what we saw at Deer Ridge was a very similar trend. So way out here is the yellow dot from their previous 134 break, and this was their nursery mortality. Here um, is their second break, and you can start to see their nursery mortality was really climbing. This was a well over, says 40%, it wasn't quite that high, but we had down into 17, and then we started hitting nine, six, six, and then we had a five. So we definitely saw from a nursery mortality, we saw improvement by implementing our Barricade PERS product. So the one thing that I will uh, mention that I forgot to on the first slide was when we used the Barricade, it was not the same strain in Skyview that Skyview was actually facing. So we used a 173 and Skyview at that time was seeing a 172. You can debate the difference amongst yourselves, but it was not necessarily a perfect match. It was for Deer Ridge. So that being said, our plan moving forward is we always want to continue to improve our biosecurity because ideally we would never have a PERS break, but I don't see that happening any time in the near future. We always want to continue to find preventative plans, and we want to use the best technology that's out there. So because of the results that we saw and the financial impact that it had on our system, we chose to move forward with Barricade, and we're actually going to implement it in a strategy for pre- and post-break. And we are also using the strategy because we technically wean negative pigs into a positive nursery. So having that additional protection has been really where we've seen the benefit. Um, I didn't have the dots on the map, but at this point moving forward, our nursery mortality has started to creep back up into 4, 5, and 6 percent, even though the pigs are technically negative going in. So I want to thank Dr. Seat for the opportunity and open it up to any questions if we have time. It's time for questions. In Deer Ridge? Yeah. Hold yeah, so Deer Ridge break. was three weeks post break. So it was much sooner to the actual point of break versus Skyview. So at that point in time, we were still weaning all positive purse pigs. So, and we did do. Say what? Yeah, it was, it was pretty rough. Um, so we did do rope testing in the nurseries, and we would still find positives, but we weren't seeing the mortality nor the medication use that we do in our normal PERS breaks. Brigitte, could you comment on how long it took the farm to administer the vaccination ballpark and any tips on administering, particularly to the wean pigs? Yep, so I would tell you that in the end, doing the whole process added 30 minutes to their wean pig vaccination. Um, they ended up finding that the best way for them to do it was gathering the whole team and then working in sets of two. So we also vaccinate our pigs with mycocerco at weaning, so there were more than just doing that process, but they would do it in a team of two, and they had, so on, at Deer Ridge, they had eight people doing it. At Skyview, they had four people doing it. And so one would hold, the other would do the two vaccinations, mark the pig, drop, hold. And that was the way for them to be able to manage it. Because when they tried doing it as like one person, it added an hour to the process. So, and it's, that's definitely why we're going with the pre and post break plan so that we don't necessarily have that additional labor cost all the time. Yeah. Uh, did you do any ELISA testing? After you vaccinated, you said you collected rope samples? Yep, we did ropes, and all we did was PCR. We didn't do any ELISA. Okay. 
You mentioned that your mortality had crept back up. Uh, one, are those vaccinated pigs? Have you continued to vaccinate those pigs? Two, what's the, uh, what do you attribute that creep in mortality to? Yep, great question. So we asked, did we continue to vaccinate pigs and what was the creep in mortality? So we did not continue to vaccinate pigs because we only had 16 weeks worth of product. So once we were done, we were done. I attribute that creep in mortality to the fact that Skyview, for example, is weaning negative pigs, but our nursery environment is still very much positive. Um, so when we take rope samples or if I do necropsies and submit, we always find a uh, PERS positive PCR on them, and it typically is a pretty low CT, under 20. So. Time for one more. This will be our last question, then we're going to move on. In both those sow farms, were there new introductions or re-breaks on the same virus? Great question. So both of those sow farms, those were brand new introductions that we'd never seen. Dr. Mason, thank you. How about a thank round of you. applause?